know you've been thinking it. Okay, how much time could AI actually save my accounting firm? In this video, I'm walking you through a full day in the life. How AI can save the average accountant's hours a day. We're talking missed payrolls, HR disputes, rogue beekeepers, and pumping out social media content while the kids are kicking down my office door. This isn't theory. I'm gonna show you real stuff you can run today. A collection of use cases and three important lessons I've learned. The kicker being by lesson three, you might stop using ChatGPT altogether. Wait, what? The team put a bunch of research into this one and as you'll see, we got some pretty wild new ideas we're gonna go through today. Okay, my name's Jason. I last ran a 40 person CPA firm. Now I help firms around the world use AI to run better firms. Let's get into it, a day in the life. For me, I got a whole bunch of kids, man. So the best time of the day, it is the 90 minutes in the morning when everybody's still asleep. Sweet, sweet freedom. So what do I do at that time? Well, I rock up to the computer bleary eyed and I see my biggest client isn't gonna make payroll next week and it's evidently my fault. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna grab the most recent financials we've issued and the transcript from last month's advisory meeting. We'll chuck it into ChatGPT using the O3 mini high model and say, look through the financials to see why the company may soon run out of cash. Pull in any relevant notes from this transcript of our last discussion with the client. And this gives me a, a helpful catch up because I, I moved this client to another member of my team a couple months ago and I've got absolutely no idea what's going on. I wasn't on that call that we just grabbed the transcript for. Here's the response. Uh, low cash reserves, wasn't much money in the bank to begin with, high current liabilities. Importantly here, a lot of accounts receivable, that's actually almost two times their cash balance. New debt, negative equity, that's a classic, usually means somebody's been dipping into the kitty. And would you look at that, in our last meeting, we recommended doing cash forecasting. Always feels nice when you're right. Now. That result from ChatGPT is pretty good. Honestly, that's probably as detailed as I'm gonna get with the client without doing that full like cash forecasting engagement. And before I forget, important note here, make sure you're using the ChatGPT team plan. It's the only plan you should be putting client information into because on that team plan, it doesn't train your prompts into the model and it comes with SOT2 type two security, a higher level of security than most of the apps in the accounting ecosystem. So how much time did I just save? Seven minutes and 46, I don't know. Any number I say, somebody in the comments is gonna fight me and I'm too thin skinned for this. Let's, okay, let's say seven minutes because I didn't have to go through the transcript. I wasn't on that meeting, it did all that for me. Okay, let's just keep going. Because now, I'm off to the exercise bike, listening to my favorite podcast, and I learned some great ideas about how to evade annoying clients asking for status updates. Is my to return ready yet? Sweet summer child, it is done when I say it's done. Anyways, I'm on my exercise bike, look at me go. The trouble now is my brain is full of good ideas, but my hands are tied. So I'm gonna capture these ideas while I'm on the bike, <laughs> send emails to tax clients once a week, <laughs> only when tax return is in process, Think through all scenarios that need different email templates. You remind me about this in an hour. Now that note won't make sense to anybody but you. In fact, an hour from now it won't make sense to you either, which is why I used the ChatGPT tasks model. So I actually created a reminder. Now, once I'm off the bike, I'm all showered up back at my battle station. I'll get that reminder from ChatGPT if I have notifications enabled on my phone or my desktop. And I'm just gonna copy what I said into the prompt, but also pull in the full transcript of that podcast episode. And there's lots of free tools to do this with. Just Google YouTube transcript downloader. And I'll add to the prompt, use these notes to build a V1 of this new process as discussed in the transcript that I can delegate to my team including initial email templates. And on this one, I'm gonna enable deep research. It basically means it's gonna go work on this for like 10 minutes and give me a much more comprehensive version back. Then I'll share that with my team to cut them loose on the project. In fact, remind me to send the client status update thing to Becky in an hour. By then I'll be into the office, deep research will be done working on it, and I'll just share the ChatGPT conversation with her then. But I'll, I'll just spoil the ending for you. Look at the output here. Look at what it produced. It explains what we're doing up at the top, kind of sets the context, who we're gonna send updates to and when, gives us a whole checklist for the admin team who will send the reminders, and at the bottom, even four email templates to start with. Now, am I gonna run with this as is? Almost certainly not, but compare this to the brief that you usually give your team, this is a pretty darn good start. And it gets me to big lesson number one, which is use AI to build leverage. The real time savings here is I've used AI to enable my team, reducing rework on this project because I've seeded it with some initial expectations rather than doing a totally half-baked explanation in a rush. 
Okay, maybe that was still half-baked. That wasn't half-baked? How much time did that ultimately save me? I don't know, maybe an hour of rework down the road because I better explain it to the whole team. Can we? Can we just, just drop the whole contrived exact measurement of time thing? You can fight me no matter what I say. And you already clicked on the video, which was kind of the, that was kind of the goal. If you thought that was cool, buddy, those use cases that we are just scratching the surface. Now I gotta squeeze one more email in before the animals get in. And it's some dumb regulation the client's asking me about that has absolutely nothing to do with accounting. Why does this, do you know what I do? Evidently the city makes beekeepers register with the city as if, as if the city's gonna catch some rogue bees and tie them back to my client. But here's three ways that AI can help me get to the bottom of this. First, explain to me like I'm 15, the beekeeping registration rules in Irvington, New York. Very important, enable browsing and use the O3 mini high model. What I never want is an AI model answering a factual question based on its training data. By enabling browsing, it'll pull current info from the web to answer the question. And I can even tell it to go to a specific website like the group that issues the rules. In this case, this is pretty good, but what if I wanna like find some exceptions? Oftentimes that's, that's, that's the good stuff. In this case, unfortunately, no such luck. Classic big brother all up in my bee stuff. Now, one last thing I often do in situations like this, when you have more complex rules, I'll pull all those rules in, usually a large amount of information, but then I'll explain the client's situation, the facts of what they got going on and have it apply that client specific situation to the rules, like whatever that looks like. In fact, if you enable deep research, it'll even go out and pull additional commentary, oftentimes pulling over a hundred sources. You gotta be careful there because you may not want everything. But if you got a few minutes to burn deep research, it'll do a much more comprehensive version of that for you. You are still responsible for the answer. We're just trying to shorten the path to that answer. We can use AI to be productive and still use our brains. Those two things are not mutually exclusive. Okay. Animals are starting to stir, but I, oh, I just remembered, I gotta send our weekly blog post to our marketing team. Gosh, H darn it, let's do this quick. Not distracted at all. The easiest way to write with AI is to give it a whole bunch of context, meeting transcripts, other stuff that you've written. I've got cash forecasting on the brain now. And if I go out to my AI meeting recorder, I'll pull three recent client meetings that I've done doing cash planning live. Like these are actual client meetings. I'll go to ChatGPT and I'll say, go through these transcripts and give me ideas for blog posts I could write. Use my specific frameworks and create new ones where you see common themes. This is why AI meeting recorders are so powerful. If you're not sure what app to use for this, I'll just point you to what I use, Fireflies. The reason being it can join any online meeting platform. So like Zoom AI, for example, only works with Zoom. Fireflies can also connect to your voice over IP phone system and even has a really good mobile app for recording in-person meetings. Back to ChatGPT, here are the ideas. Some of them are specific to client meetings, but there are a couple good ones down here. Lead magnet playbook, how value pricing transforms your margins. I had it roll with that one, number five. One note here, I now use deep research pretty heavily for writing, and that's because it makes more interesting connections in the source materials. So if you're giving it a big old transcript or even a bunch of transcripts, and you can stand to wait a few minutes, you're gonna get w like way higher quality writing out of deep research. Again, should go without saying, what AI writes, it's your first draft. Make it your own, or incoming big brain idea, use this to unblock a marketing partner. This script, it's actually captured my technical essence. And that's the hard part when it comes to firm marketing. Marketers don't know what you know, so you get mad when they can't write what you know. But here, we've captured the technical stuff. So let someone else make them words sound more good, right? Which brings me to big lesson number two, build resources for the people you work with where they would otherwise need your time. Share this with your marketing partner and they're off to the races, right? but there's so much more we can do with this concept. In fact, I just got to the office and Mike and Peter are in a full wrestling match in the lobby because Mike parked in the employee of the month spot when Peter, he was gonna be announced as employee of the month today, but he took the spot, they're mad. It's a real fringe scenario, parking lot double jeopardy, it's messy, which is where I could have built a resource for my team, an HR assistant. Because the answer to this dispute, it exists in our employee manual. It's just 150 pages long and written in old English. So here, we're gonna create a custom GPT. I'll just attach our employee manual, give it a few directions, just give me the excerpts from the knowledge I've provided to answer user questions. 
Once I created this, I can share it with other members of the team. There's another benefit of being on the ChatGPT team plan. This custom GPT is now private to just our team and my team members, they're gonna see our HR bot in the top left of their ChatGPT. So Mike can ask, uh, I just found out I'm being named employee of the month at lunch today. Can I go move my car to the special parking spot? And Mike will learn that no, you don't get the spot until the following day. The rules are the rules and Peter was in the right. Pretty quick to create custom GPTs like this, but the cumulative time savings of your team being able to go straight to this for answers, instead of coming to me, it's gonna be significant. At least, um, that's gonna be 25, how much time would that be? Uh, that's uh, 14, uh, I've, it's gonna save you a lot of time, but I'm at the office, still haven't even made it to my desk yet, and Becky's hounding me for my monthly time reports, not this again. Looky here, let's use AI as a data analyst and then give Becky the power to do the same. So, I've got some ugly data here, a nasty export that I have to do some playing around with each month before giving that data to another member of my team to do other important business things with, and I don't care who you are, some version of this exists for all of us right now. Here's how I'll use ChatGPT to modify this data. Write and run some code to convert the attached data into a new format. Do five things, all listed down here. And this is using ChatGPT's built-in data analyst feature. And these items, what we're asking it to do, that can be pretty advanced. It's a super powerful feature that can also be finicky. Like you'll see here in the response, it gave me the code, but I, I still wanted it to run the code. And it, it, it eventually did, but it's almost like it, it doesn't even remember that it's capable of this, so it takes some forcing sometimes. Eventually we got there. Here's a preview of the output data. It is sorted by descending client ID like it's supposed to be. And this is cool because um, it's not the LLM that's doing this. The AI itself, like it has limitations for how much data it can handle. It's the LLM writing code and then running your data through that code. Or the other way around, running your code on that data. And once I've got a prompt that does that well, does it reliably, I can share this prompt with my colleagues. In fact, incoming, uh, another big brain tip alert, show the graphic. Use a text expander to share your prompts with your team. So for example, look at this. I type in semicolon DP, DP for data processing, I just made that up. I do that, it drops the whole prompt in there. ChatGPT's ready to go, you just gotta attach your data and Bob's your uncle. Not now, Bob. There are a number of apps that let you use text snippets like this. Text Expander's probably the biggest one, and on their team plan, you can share text snippets across team members. So that entire report conversion, Becky can now do it herself thanks to your ChatGPT prompt. And there are so many ways that we could use these canned prompts to save you time. What if, what if each time we're delivering a set of financial statements, we run them through AI as a second set of eyes for any additional insights? In fact, earlier in the video when my client got upset they were running out of cash, we could build cash analysis into that shared prompt. So we don't just let ChatGPT analyze it however it wants, I give it my framework for what to look for on cash burn, for example. I build that into a prompt, the prompt is shared with my team, they use my prompt when delivering financials, and I can continue to improve upon the prompt over time. In fact, with a tool like Text Expander, I can update those prompts myself, and the updated versions get pushed out to everyone who is using them. Oh, oh, that's nerdy, but I like it. Now, all very cool, but the best nugget you pull from this video, it's probably gonna be this, is that we need to begin thinking beyond chat. ChatGPT, don't get me wrong, huge time saver. The gateway drug for all things AI, but many of these workflows, they can be set up to run behind the scenes unprompted. Let me give you an example. Let's say I've got 10 minutes till a meeting with a new lead, some internet influencer that could be a great client for the firm, but I don't know anything about them. We turn to ChatGPT here, brief me on everything I need to know about major internet celebrity and accounting influencer, Jason Stats. Important that I enable browsing here, so it pulls up-to-date info. And it gives me a pretty helpful digest to get me up to speed, but wouldn't it be nice if that also pulled from my other tools? Maybe gave me the meeting agenda or summarized recent emails with my team. Buddy, this is why ChatGPT, it is just the tip of the AI iceberg. The same way that we work with ChatGPT, talking with it. Custom workflow builders, they can do the same thing. Stuff like Zapier, Make, N8N, Lindy. 
They let you build totally modular workflows that can send and receive conversations in the same way that you do with ChatGPT. In fact, look at this. This is, this is just a partial workflow I built out in Zapier. The second node here, I can send the exact same message we just did, the one about briefing me on JSON. We can send that to ChatGPT as part of the workflow. Here's the response. Looks pretty similar to what we got. It's, it's everything I need. But then what do I do with that information next? I could have it, uh, I could have it text it to me automatically have it send it to me in Slack. And, and I know we just went fully off the nerd cliff and these tools are hard and scary. This opens a whole nother rabbit hole of, of how you even use these tools. And most of us aren't there yet, but here's the thing, is you start with ChatGPT. And then when you find a killer use case in ChatGPT, take it beyond chat. Watch some YouTube videos about these tools. Figure out how to do it or, or hire someone that can help you. Maybe after every client meeting, you get uh, 10 tweet ideas based on that last meeting transcript automatically. Or every Monday, you get 10 blog post ideas from your meetings the previous week. There are YouTubers and automation nerds doing wild stuff with this whole custom workflows. This goes as far as like managing your email inbox, for example, letting AI decide, should this email go here or there to this person or that person? Or maybe even should it get an auto response? You create the rules for the AI and then let it run automatically according to your rules. It's a, it is a big old rabbit hole, but step one, Step one is getting AI into your team's hands to begin identifying killer use cases. Then once you've found them, you embed them into your firm. So everybody's getting, I don't know, tweet ideas from their next meeting or a message to prep them for their next meeting. Because the best version of these workflows are the ones you don't even have to go to ChatGPT for. I'm overwhelmed. I know. That's all very exciting, but remember what I said step one was, getting AI into everybody's hands. And the best place to start with that is this video, the ultimate roundup for accountants, how to use ChatGPT and a whole bunch of features you probably didn't even know were a thing.